My name is Linda Hooper and I am the principal of Whitwell Middle School. We are a five through eight school in the southeast corner of Tennessee in a very small community called Whitwell, Tennessee, about 1,600 people. And Whitwell is basically a white, Protestant, Christian, very community, very evangelical community. And we're surrounded by these mountain ranges. We're in a valley called the Sequatchie, which in Cherokee means hog trough. And if you're a farm person, when you look down on the valley, you can see it looks like a hog trough. One of the things that we thought about in 1998 is we, you know, academically we do fine. But our kids aren't exposed to a larger world. You know, we live in a global community. Even from Whitwell, Tennessee, you can be anywhere on the globe in 18 hours. Even from here. And we're an hour from any airport. So we're discussing and we're trying to find something that would, you know, really help our children with the understanding of number one, other culture, something totally foreign to them, and number two, that not everybody in the world is treated well. That there, you know, that bullying and intolerance and hatred go on everywhere. And not everybody's all alike in their community. There are lots of communities where they have a lot of diversity, which we don't have. I found out that in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the I Earn Foundation was having a conference about internet projects for high schools. Well, I'm a firm believer that my middle schoolers are as sharp as anybody, and if a high school can do it, the middle schoolers can do it. So I asked David Smith, who happened to be a teacher here, and also the football coach, and that always helps, you know, because football is kind of king in the South. If he, I said, I want you to go over to this conference and I want you to find something that we can do that will meet all the things that this, our School Improvement Council has said we need to do. So he came back and he said, you know, there's a, a study of the Holocaust. And he said, I want you to look at it. So I did and I thought, mm-hmm. There would be nothing more foreign to a group of Protestant white folks than the Jewish culture, okay? So we're, yeah, that, that met the first criteria. Jews have, you know, the, the diaspora, you know, they've scattered all over the universe. Nothing would be no, more global than a study of Jewish culture. That's number two. And hello, if you start looking at the Holocaust, you are definitely gonna learn what hate brings you, you know, and intolerance and, and propaganda and lies and how, how the tiniest actions and that's one thing I, I try to focus on with kids. The tiniest action that you do, you know, horrible events didn't start with a big horrible event. It started with a tiny action. You know, we made fun of somebody. We put somebody down. We turned our back on them. We didn't pay attention. All, you know, all these things built into things like the Holocaust. I went to Sandra Roberts, our language arts teacher, and I said, Sandra, I just had the best idea. You need to start an after-school class, uh, a study of the Holocaust for our eighth graders. And not only do we need to do this, but we need the parents or somebody in the family, some adult to come with them because, you know, families are first teachers and if you're going to make changes, you've got to get the family involved. And I said, oh yes, and you're not going to get paid for this and the students are not going to get any credit. <clears throat> and she said, oh, that just sounds good. <laughs> so we start. The parents came and, you know, our parents, our community supports each other. When yeah. our parents started to see that just because people were of a different religion or race or culture, they were being persecuted like this, they were just, they just, they just couldn't get over it. You know, it was just, I don't know, it was just too much for some of them to handle. You know, they, we read Night and they cried. We read Daniel's story and we cried. So it, it was just a wonderful experience. We had a family in our group who were Jehovah's Witness. And they realized that it wasn't just Jewish people who were murdered, that we murdered, the Nazis murdered, Jehovah's Witness, and, you know, and 
gypsies and righteous Gentiles and homosexuals and in people with disabilities and, you know, in six million. I mean, there's not that many people in the whole state of Tennessee. That year just, it was a wonderful success. It was just wonderful. So the next year, we started studying again and some child came and they came in my office and they said, Ms. Hooper, we just really need to talk because I can't get my head around six million. Have you ever seen six million? And I said, no, not really. I mean, I've been in very large urban areas like Tokyo and New York, and I know there's you know, six million plus people there, but I don't get six million either. And they said, well, we'd like to collect something. I said, fine. We'll, we do that. You know, I didn't think about it. I didn't say, well, we need to study this. I'm sorry. If kids want to do something, let them go. As long as it's not immoral or illegal, let's go do it. Let's get on with it. So, I said, now here's the caveat. Number one, it has to be connected to World War II or the Holocaust in some way. You are not just going to go out here and collect bottle caps or pennies or rocks or whatever. You know, you got to have a basis for doing this. And it has to be small enough that we can manage it. About a week later, they came back and in their research, they had discovered that Joseph Vailer, a Jewish gentleman who was also Norwegian, is credited with inventing paper clips and that the Norwegians wore paper clips on their lapels as a protest against Nazi policies. They registered their project with the National Holocaust Museum in Washington. They started sending out letters to their aunts, their grannies, you know, anybody they could think of. And lo and behold, Lena Geeter, 95 years old, a survivor, she saw this on the National Holocaust site. She calls up her friends, Peter and Dagmar Schroeder, who happened to be correspondents for a German newspaper syndicate, and they lived in Washington, D.C. And she says in her 95-year-old authoritative voice, you will go to Tennessee, and you will write about these children, and you will see that they get their six million paper clips. So they come fall in love with our kids and our kids with them. They go back to Washington. They call up Dita Smith at the Washington Post. She's a correspondent. And they ask her to come and write about this project. She does. Came out on Passover, during Passover that year. Before this article came out, we had 150,000 paper clips and thought we were doing great. Within six weeks of the article appearing, we had 24 million and counting. 